turned into what? They turned into snakes. So, if they could do that, Aaron says, look, I threw the gold in there and the calf just came out. One of the Talmud documents says that it came out skipping on the fire. That them witchcraft workers made it skip. Now, if you know how to believe if they can make a rod turn into a snake, I believe they could probably make a calf skip. <laughs> huh? I mean, there are some people say, I don't believe that. It's not in the Bible. Well, how are you going to believe that they made a, a rod turn into a snake, but they can't make a calf skip in the fire? It just don't make good sense. If, if they've written it, then those, some of those were very good and honest people that wrote that. They were probably closer. Everybody probably didn't see it. But anyway, that was one of the excuses that they gave. So now the sin was great. Now they had three types of punishment that I've read to you. They had the plague, they had the water that they drank, and 3,000 people were already dead from the sword. The Levites didn't have anything to do with it, and Moses commanded them, and they slay 3,000 men. Ironically, you can look in Pentecost in chapter 2 of Acts and you'll find out that 3,000 were added to the church on that day. Can I hear an amen? So I want you to notice something, the sins that they judged them on. And I thought it was quite interesting. You know how that some people have left God and they find problems all the time with the way God judged people. But they sacrificed the burnt offerings over in verse number 6 of chapter 32. <clears throat> they all died by the sword. They were witnessed to and they were warned. They died by the sword, 3,000 people. In verses number 28. Number two, there's those that kiss the calf. If you go back to the book of 2 Kings, 1 Kings, you can find out where they kissed the calves when they worshiped the calf worship. That was part of the worship they did. Those people that kissed the calf, they had to die with a plague in verse 35. Now, if you'll notice, there was those others that were not warned, but they were caught in what they were doing. Nobody told them it was a sin. They just got caught up in the moment and they were probably naked and dancing and they didn't kiss the calf and they wasn't warned and they got caught up in it, but they drank the water. How many people you think drank the water? All of them. You don't really know how many that died because the Talmud says that the drinking of the water wasn't an immediate death. Some believe it was days. Some died in days, some died in weeks, and some died in months. And in one instance, they said sometimes it took a year to two years to die from drinking the water. Isn't that strange? Those that was merry in their heart, how are you going to know who they were? No. They didn't kiss the calf. They didn't offer sacrifices. And they didn't offer burnt offerings. They were just, you know, a little bit happy in their heart. Probably going along with the music. Probably watching the people dance and patting their foot. Who knows what it was? It was something like that. You know, they were merry in their heart. Now let's go to Numbers chapter 5. And I want to talk to you about the non repentant, adulterous woman. I think this is very good. Can I hear an amen? Man, I tell you what, God is a good God. I want you to notice something to keep in mind where we're going, that Israel is an adulterous woman at this particular point. Israel has turned away from God. She has disannulled the marriage covenant. She has decided that she didn't want anything to do with God now, and she loved the golden cap more than she loved God, and she broke her word to God. Some people feel like, well, I didn't really give my word to God when I got saved. What do you think a blood covenant is? A blood covenant, I said to you, it's like the flesh when you cut, bleeding. Had to be an animal sacrifice to get this covenant. And they did give their word to God. You give your word to God or you can't be saved. You don't say, well, I might do it or I will try to do it. You say, Lord, I'm going to serve you. They said in 24th chapter, all these things that God has said, say it with me, we will do. That's what a covenant is made up out of. And if you break your word and you're not faithful, that's bad. 
Now I want you to notice something. We're going to talk about the adulterous woman <coughs> in Numbers chapter 5, but I want you to get a hold of this. It can't be related to only a woman because if that's true, <coughs> if that's true, <coughs> then none of the men that drank the water would have died. Right? So it had to be for anyone that's hiding a sin that's unrepentant. This is what we're dealing with. For people that don't really repent, for people that are blatantly claiming to be religious but don't repent. Look what the Bible said in verse 12. And I'm going to get through this. I've got a lot of reading here to do. So I want you to get a hold of this. Get your pencil if you want to go with me. <clears throat> now, the Bible said in verse 12, Speak to the children of Israel. If any man... Man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and the man lie with her carnally, and it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and she's defiled. There be no witness against her, neither shall she be taken in, in this manner and caught in adultery, is what it's saying. The spirit of jealousy, in verse 14, shall come upon him, her husband, and he be jealous of his wife, <clears throat> and she be defiled, or if the spirit of jealousy come up on him, <clears throat> and he be jealous of his wife, she be not defiled, and she be, thank you brother, and she be not defiled, then shall the man bring his wife, now look what they do, the man shall bring his wife unto the priest, now I want you to notice this offering, <clears throat> this is not like any other offering, it's not like a burnt offering, it's not like a sacrifice a peace offering, it's not like a fellowship offering, uh, it's not like a meat offering, <clears throat> it's not like a sin offering, this is altogether different. Then shall the man bring his wife unto the priest, and he shall bring her offerings for her the tenth part of an ephod of barley meal, and he shall pour no oil upon it, nor frankincense, their own, for it's an offering of a memorial of bringing inequity to remembrance. So it's something to bring remembrance of a sin, of inequity. And this is an offering that she's getting ready to give to God. <clears throat> Verse 17, And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel, and in the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it into the water. Exactly what Moses did in the 32nd chapter of Exodus. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering memorial in her hand, which is a jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth a curse. And the priest shall charge her by an oath and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to an uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, you be free from this bitter water of the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among the people, and when the Lord doth make thy thighs to rot <clears throat> and thy belly to swell. This water that causeth the curse shall go into the bowels and to make thy belly to swell and thy thighs to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen. There had to be an agreement with this woman that she was going to go into this. Now, if she had did this, it makes good sense that Martha told Michelle, she said, well, I could at least say, boy, if I had done something like that and I was at this point, I think I'd repent and just say, hey, let's forget this. The Talmud says this, it tells me that if they went before the 70 Sanhedrin court that Jesus supposedly went before, Judas was there with them anyway. If they had went there and she had pled guilty, the issue was dropped. What they did to her was... Another judgment, another time or something. 
But she did not do this. This is the unrepentant woman, and look what happened. And the priest shall write these curses in a book. Everybody say it with me. Say a book. book. It's good stuff, man. And then, notice this. He blots them out of the book with the bitter water. He takes the water and he puts on there and he washes the ink off of the page and he takes it and he gets it in a sponge or a rag, right? And he wrings it out into a cup. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave it uh, offering before the Lord and offer it up on the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering in the memorial therein and burn it up on the altar. And afterwards he'll cause the woman to drink the water. I want you to notice this offering. I want to talk a little bit about that. This dust that they had mixed with the water, the Hebrew root word for that is affliction. Lament. In other words, to cry out. It was a vexation. When you get into this offering, I want you to get a hold of this because it's an offering like to provoke somebody. Because for one thing, the barley offering was the smallest offering you could get. You know? And if you come to God, you have to, you should always have an offering in your hand to give to God. But they come and they didn't put any frankincense on it. They didn't put any oil on it or anything. And it was like, ew. And they waved this before the Lord and they, God accepted it the way he taste of it. Are you here? It's like provoking God. And this memorial was to remember and make them to remember the sin. <clears throat> this is pretty heavy. But then they've taken it, and if this woman is innocent, everything's going to be all right, and she's free from the curse. But still at all, she's willing to go <clears throat> to this point without repenting. She's willing to go, and she's willing to go ahead and drink the water. Okay, she must be innocent, right? Sometimes this came up with women whenever they, their husband was gone, like for maybe 15, 16, 18 months, and and they come, her husband come back and she's got a newborn baby. He said, wait a minute, baby come in nine or ten months. How do you get the baby? Or your belly swell. That's a better example. Hey, how your belly get swelled? I've been gone 18 months. Oh, uh, oh, this was your baby. No, it ain't my baby. Baby's coming nine, ten months. You know, I mean, how do you get pregnant? I, I, this is your baby. Are you here? <clears throat> so anyway, the Bible goes on to say that the woman shall bear seed if she's innocent. But nevertheless, let's go and finish the rest of this. And <clears throat> he blot them out in verse 23, soaks up the water with a towel or something and wrings it out into a cup. Verse 24 and he shall cause a woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse, and the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand, wave it before the Lord, and offer it into the altar. And the priest shall take a handful of the offering, give a memorial thereof, and burn it up on the altar, and afterwards cause the woman to drink the water. And when he hath made her to drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespassing against her husband, that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter, and her belly shall swell, and her thighs shall rot, and the woman shall be a curse among the people. And if the woman be not defiled, <clears throat> but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive the seed. Amen? In other words, she can have the baby. This is the law of jealousy. <clears throat> when a wife goes aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled. Or when the spirit of jealousy cometh upon him 
and he be jealousy over his wife, and shall set the woman before the Lord, and the priest shall execute upon her all this law, then shall the man be guiltless from inequity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity. Now, if you notice, this doesn't happen right away. So this is why that they only recorded 3,000 people to die in Exodus 32. Because they drank the water, but afterwards. Some say a few days, some say a few weeks, some say a few months, and actually one writing said up to two, and one of them said about three years, maybe. You never know. You see things happen to people down the road, and you don't relate it going back to what they did in their life and relate it to anything like that. But if you look at a, Israel as an adulterous church in, Revel, or in Exodus 32, you can understand why that she didn't repent. They weren't about to repent. And God had a way of picking everyone out of there that wanted to serve him. You don't know how many people died from that. Nobody's got a number on it. They never recorded the number in the Bible because, you know, they died over a space of time. And sometimes you see people die and you don't know why. Amen? <clears throat> you don't know why it happened. Sometimes you just see it happen over a period of time. Go with me now and look with me in Psalm 73. <clears throat> in Psalm 73... I guess a lot of people kind of look over this psalm, but I think it was interesting, to say the least. <clears throat> In verse 1, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well slipped away, for I was envious at the foolish I was envious at the foolish, the foolish people, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. I looked at them and I thought, you know what, they're doing good, so I can do good too. You know, they're not suffering vengeance. And the Bible said in the fourth verse, and there's no bands of their death. In other words, there's nothing holding. They're just out there and firming their strength, and they look like they're doing so good. Verse 5, and they, they're not in trouble as other men. Look at these sinners and people that, you know, list uh, living together and they're not married. You know, they're just living together and they're doing really good. Look at them. They're not, they're not really having trouble in their life. They've got, her husband's got a good job and, you know, they've got good money coming in. And no need for them to get married. They can try one another out first. <laughs> Verse 6. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. So they're held in with pride. Pride hadn't been dealt with. Violence covereth them as a garment all over them. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than their heart could wish. Boy, they got the abundant life, don't they? According to them. Oh, we're so blessed. Anyway, verse 8. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. Speak of high things, of who they are. They, in verse 9, they set their mouth against the heavens, their tongue walked through the earth, and therefore his people return hither. The waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. Now what does Colossians 2 verse 14 say in the New Testament? Huh? Turn with me there. Colossians 2 14. This is good scripture. If you love it, say amen. amen. Colossians 2.14. <clears throat> and it's so sad to see that people are, are just missing God every day. And people sometimes are, are claiming their self to be holy. Hello. They claim their self to be so anointed of God. But you know, there's something missing. How many of y'all feel like sometimes there's something just missing? Out of someone's life, you know, they don't go to church, they don't have a good prayer life, they don't study the Bible, they don't tithe, they don't give God any money, they don't really believe what they, I mean, they only believe to an extent. No, I don't believe enough to give, to give God 10%. I mean, it just ain't happening. I mean, man, God's got a good understanding. I don't fool his money, he don't fool mine. 
Hello? Nevertheless, look what it said in Colossians 2, 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which is contrary to us, he took it out of the way and had it nailed it to the cross. <clears throat> I look at this woman in Numbers chapter 5. There was one proposition for her. She could have repented and could have backed out of the whole thing. But you know what? She chose to drink the cup of inequity. She chose to drink the curse. I look at Revelation 18, verse 3. Go with me there. <clears throat> the Bible said in Revelation 18, verse 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of their delicacies. Some people today are doing good with sin. You've got some people today, they're drug dealing. I know some people go to church and they, they get their doctor's prescriptions and they actually sell their purchases.